Hello everybody, um, wel welcome to the my drainage pond, my neighborhood drainage pond. Um, this is my first video I've ever made, but um, hopefully um, I can catch some fish. Um, I took you guys down here today to uh, show you how to uh, fish for carp. Um, definitely my favorite bait for carp is bread. Um, any old bread will do as long as it's soft enough to ball into a, a tight ball so it stays in the water. Um, you don't need a big piece. A piece about that big will make two. So I'll show you. The trick is you need it soft enough that you can mangle it. Just push it in like this. Tighten it multiple times. Till it's nice and a hard square, cube, sphere, whatever. The shape really doesn't matter. Do the same thing the other one. The point, you want to make it so you can hardly push it in anymore. That way it stays on the water. Alright, my first setup. One of my rigs I like to use is called a fish finder rig. You can see it has a sliding weight, a sliding sinker, with uh, two hooks. It doesn't have to have two hooks, but I like mine with two hooks. Um, these hooks aren't very big. I don't know the exact size of them, but they're, they're sized to my finger. They're usually used for a small saltwater fish, so they shouldn't bend. Um, and if, it, if I do happen to get a turtle, which I do every once in a while, then it they shouldn't ruin the hook and I might be able to get the hook out um, and you want to put the bread on so it's just on the tip like that you don't want to push it past the tip because the carp feels a sharp point while you're while it's biting it'll let it'll let go I like to use fish finders on this on a bait caster because then the carp can take it out without feeling any drag at all but it will work for a spinner reel so I'm gonna cast this one into the shade over here first there are mostly small carp in this lake, so I wouldn't expect anything big. But it does make a good, a good place to show you guys how to shoot a video, or uh, how to catch a carp through a video. So I'm going to leave that there. I leave the line sem semi tight, so it's got a little bit of a curve in it. If the fish takes it, hopefully it'll take the drag out. Once I see that reel spinning, I know I got him. So I'm gonna leave that to sit there for a little while. My second setup is just a regular bottom rig. You can buy these at Walmart for like two bucks, less than two dollars. I got a pretty good ounce weight so I can get out there as far as I want. A big two ounce weight. Got the same size hooks. They're the same double thing. I gotta make some more bread. Now the trick, you wanna keep your bread in a Ziploc bag because it keeps the bread fresh, and what you need you need the fre you need the bread fresh enough to uh, squish it up into balls. Um, and I, this bread's been sitting in my tackle box for about a week now, since the last time I came down here and carp fished. So yeah, I would leave the fish finder rig to sit. You want about a semi slack line, but for this bottom rig, you want to cast out and you want to tighten the line to as possible tight as possible, and you might want to hold on to the rod because they're either going to hook themselves on the run or they're going to feel tension and let go if you're not there to set the hook. So I'm actually going to hold this one a day. Normally I'd set this one up on a high catfish rod stand like that one and I'd go and bass fish for a little while, but today I decided I wanted to make sure I caught a carp. Okay, this one I'm going to try to launch in that corner of the trees over there. See how the trees in the water? That makes a good spot for the carp, especially considering there's a little bit of sun bleeding through right there. Alright, now that one's out. A tip to help keep your rod still so you don't spook the carp is to sit down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down. I'm going to keep the line tight. I'm going to wait for a bite. Oh, this one's getting a bite. Not bad, it's not going to be a bad day at all. Oh, 
I'm waiting for this one to hook itself. To run and then hook itself. I prefer to fish with two rods all the time. It just increases my chances of getting something. Oh, something's nibbling this one too. So like I said, my, my lake is filled with uh, mostly small carp. I wouldn't expect one over about a foot or so. There's lots of babies in here. Um, I've caught about 300 or so carp in the past two or three years and uh, only four of them are over the two foot mark. All right, I missed that guy. But that was definitely a strong bite. Didn't really set the hook properly, but obviously only took one. And that's how you know I balled the bread up good because it's still on after the bite and after I reeled it in. That one's getting touched pretty good. I'm gonna do most of my shoots for this uh, for this channel from my drainage pond right here. Um, it's just a good spot to catch a lot of fish, believe it or not. There's all kinds of fish in here. There's eels, bass, crappie, bluegills, green sunfish, lots of mosquito fish on the surface. They make great bait. Um, let's see, there's also white perch and a few brown bullhead catfish in here and lots and lots of carp. Alright, so let's try that spot again. Well, that's a little out far, but I'm actually going to get a rod stand for it. It'll be easier for me to monitor two rods. I'm actually going to pick this one up and try to set the hook on the next run. Missed him. That could have been a turtle. It didn't feel like a carp. That one's out a little deeper, so maybe that'll give me a bigger carp. Smaller carp like to congregate around trees and bushes and weeds, deep, deeper water and in like a deep hole. The bigger carp kind of just swim around doing whatever they want. I caught, my biggest carp in this lake was caught by an old bush over there before it got cut down. And uh, my second and third biggest were caught all the way out in the middle. And my fourth was probably over here by these trees over here. So I think the big ones just kind of swim around doing whatever they want. Small ones usually school around the structure points. And you guys might want to try some of your own techniques. This is just what I prefer for the drainage pond. But uh, techniques vary with different ponds. I'm purposely not casting out that far. I kind of want it in the middle. I don't want to get too close to the brush or we might have problems with turtles. Might have problems with turtles anyway. So I'm gonna pick this one up because it keeps getting bite. The trick is to try to keep it as motionless as possible. You don't want it to move or you'll spook the fish. Carp are some of the most sensitive fish I've ever fished for. Even the slightest movement scares them away.
I think this is a man-made lake. Um, it's got lots of rocky shores, and lots of basketball-sized boulders near the shores. Um, it drops down to about six or so, six or seven or so feet out deep. Mostly a sandy, silty bottom with a few trash bags laying on and flower pots and other garbage that I occasionally hook with my treble hook lures. Not the most exciting lake to fish, but it's at the, within walking distance of my house and I do catch fish here. Bass and cro crappie fishing have always been really tricky in this lake. You never know what they're going to take or when. And it's super stained water. The water's hardly, you can hardly see through it. It's been raining for the past few days, so the water's really high and really stained. It's about two or three inches higher than usual, and it's... Usually I can see about two or three inches down into it. I can hardly see an inch down into it today. reel this one in. I think it cast it a little too deep. Just remember if you get a nibble or two that is a carp. Carp do like to nibble. They're the only big fish I know that like to nibble on the bait first before they finally take it. So if you do start to get nibbles don't reel, your, don't reel it in because those are the carp. In fact, I found out that the bigger ones actually nibble longer. The bigger ones are a lot less careless, I mean careful, than the small ones. You'll probably get a lot of nibbles from the big ones. You'll probably get the little ones that are just going to all of a sudden pull it. The little ones are actually the ones that are, might pull your rod into the water if you're not careful. Even a foot-long carp is pretty strong. I like to use bread mostly. I just prefer bread. Um, I know lots of people that use uh, corn and um, dough for carp as well. Those work fine too. Um, dough tends to stay on a little better. It's harder for a carp to take dough off the hook, but I feel that it's also hard to get a nice hook set with dough. I don't feel like they take it as strong as they do with bread. And corn is kind of its own bait within itself. Um, some days they're going to like corn a little better than bread, and some days it's the other way around again. I have fished for corn before here. I've caught in a definitely probably about 90% of the carp in this pond on bread. Probably caught about seven or so percent on earthworm by accident. They do they will take earthworm, and I've probably caught about three percent or so on corn. But that's just because I don't try corn very often. But it definitely works. Another bait that I've tried here, it doesn't necessarily work in my drainage pond, but carp are pretty selective in their f diet to certain areas. Hot dog also might work pretty well in other lakes. I heard carp will take anything depending on the lake, so... In my drainage pond they won't take hot dog, but they probably will in yours. And a lot, and a lot of different lakes and ponds um, in the United States have carp, so... I. I think it would be willing to try, it would be worth to try a, a good amount of them if you were looking for carp. If you're looking for a lot of small carp, I would try the drainage ponds. Little, little ponds and long creeks and if, the, if you live near the intercoastal waterway on the eastern coast, that'd be a good place to try carp. Um, It's kind of hard to tell you exactly where carp are going to be. I kind of just, on my first day fishing the drainage pond, I kind of just came down here and 
casted out some bread underneath a float and just waited and my first fish was a carp so and I just kept fishing on eventually I caught a bass on bread by accident and then I started fishing for bass and I caught crappie by accident so I kind of just grew from, grew from there so you never know what you're gonna find in these tiny little ponds problem with carp is sometimes they bite in waves and then they stop so you'll be casting out and you'll get at, you'll get out and um you'll get bit within a few seconds or so of your bait hitting the water and they won't bite again for another few minutes maybe an hour or so Personally, I, I prefer spinner gear over bait casting gear, but that's just me. But I do use my bait caster for things like fish finder rigs, and I will use it for larger lures for bass and stuff. So yeah, I figured I got a new GoPro for my birthday, and I might as well uh, make some videos. Um, I get a lot of questions about carp fishing because it's pretty difficult. Um, not easy, especially in a larger lake where the carp are more spread out than they are in the drainage pond. I'm actually going to reel both of them in because this one got a few nibbles and stopped and that one didn't. So, probably cast into a bad spot with this one. Yep, something took my bait. You want to make sure to bring plenty of bait for these guys because if you don't, they'll eat you right through. And if you do get stale bread or it gets crumbly to the point where you can ball it up into a bread, it makes great chum bait. There's lots of it in the bottom of that bag right there, but uh, I'm going to save that for a different day. A day where I plan to stay longer because it's going to get hot here quick. It's only about 7 or so in the morning here, so I know at around 9 o'clock it's going to be too hot. Like I said, this is the first day in about five days that it hasn't been stormy. Oh, look. You see that? Got one. The trick with fighting a carp is to keep your rod tip high. They're masters at spinning off the hook. And they're going to wait till they get close to the shore and run. See? Luckily, this is just a small one. It is not unlikely to see them jump out of the water. I'm going to let him wear himself out really quick. Even this guy managed to pull my pole down. And he's one of the smaller carp I've caught in here. And he's about ready to come up. Nice, pretty little shallow water carp. You can tell because of the coloring. They're usually light in color when they be feeding the shallows. With carp, they do have soft lips, but they have many layers of skin. So you're not going to hurt them too bad if it does tear a little bit. They tend to bleed a lot. Um, so don't be scared by that. Luckily, I didn't hit one of his veins. So for those of you who don't know, this is a common carp. Um... Probably one of the more common species around here. Um, they're definitely bottom feeders. You can tell because common carp always have those bright red tails. They always have that suction cup mouth with no teeth. Little sucker mouths that they suck onto the bottom with. And they have two barbels. Not sure if you can see the little whiskers or not. Two little whiskers right there. And when they're feeding on the surface, you can see that scaly pattern, that diamondback pattern in the water. 
They have nothing that can hurt you. They have this tall fin right here that they rarely stick up. But definitely that definite signature coloration. And if you look at his mouth size, the bread ball, if it was any bigger than his mouth, I wouldn't have got him. So I'm going to let this little guy go. I do not have permission to kill any of these carp, so I must release them all back. Even though this pond is overrun by them. So here's the release. Back into the dirty stained water. So there's a little bit of carp fishing for you. I'm actually going to keep going. Um, ask me anything in the comments on YouTube if you still have any questions. I try to answer as many of them as I could. Um, if you're a starting up fisherman, if you're thinking about trying this little